Thoughts? Any plans to help fix the Dolby Atmos issue where only the two center Atmos speakers play in a simpler mix in theaters with six heights? I think I know what you're talking about, and that's actually the way the recording was mixed. So yes, there are a couple of ways you can address that, but just so everybody understands the problem. Um, the way Dolby designed Atmos to work is, you know, you have speakers spread around the room somewhat uniformly based on, you know, the way they design things. And then you have these audio objects, which are an, an audio object is just a chunk of sound, the output of a mixing console when they were, you know, making the soundtrack that has some metadata attached to it that includes, so, you know, where is it that this sound should appear to be coming from? And it's up to the, what's called the decoder and renderer, um, whether it's a thousand dollar AV receiver or a $40,000 surround processor, it's, it's up to that decoder to do the best job that it can based on what is available to it, to put the sound where it belongs. This, the cool thing about this is that it's so scalable. You can have the exact same soundtrack. And if you're, you know, watching TV in your bedroom and you're just using the two speakers that are built into the TV, what you will get is stereo, but you'll still hear everything, including the dialogue and everything else. Um, if you take that exact same Blu-ray disc or whatever and play it in your dedicated home cinema, then the same soundtrack blows up and does all this cool, really cool stuff. The problem comes with certain mixers, and uh, Disney is notorious mm -hmm. for this, I'm afraid, um, who rather than doing the object-oriented stuff the way that Dolby intended it to be used, they basically just, you know, they're used to channel uh, mixing for a channel-based system, so 5.1 or 7.1, and they just, you know, if they want something to show up between two speakers, they feed it into both speakers, and, you know, your brain is supposed to figure that out. Um, what, uh, what Disney does in most of their recordings uh, seems to be, it's as though they put two more objects up on the ceiling, either two for left top right, uh, left and right top middle, or sometimes four, the top fronts and the top rears. Uh, and then they just mix to them as though they were channel-based. Yeah. And, you know, they never bother to move the objects around. They just, if, if they want something to be above you, they put it above you and they figure it's good enough. Um, if that's the way they made the soundtrack, what we ought to be doing is, you know, reproducing it accurately. So that's what you get. Um, but it is disappointing because, you know, if you have all these speakers and you're only using some of them, it's like, yeah. why did I do this? Um, so what I would suggest is consider having, if you have six, you know, say the top fronts, top middles and top rears above you, um, I would consider creating a preset and label it, you know, I don't know, 7.1.2 or yeah. whatever. And at that point, you can uh, go to the 3D view and tell the 3D view, I want you to play what is rendered as left top middle and right top middle in all three pairs of these speakers. And so you'll now have an array that covers the entire ceiling. It's all playing the same stuff because yeah. they did not build the discrete information into the soundtrack. But at least you'll have more uniform coverage up above you. And that's very easy. Just make a copy of your preset, go to the 3D view, change some of those little drop-down menus for Dolby Atmos, for example. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, save that into a new preset. And so am I correct in saying when I'm doing those Disney mixes or whatever mixes where only the middles, I'm like, oh, well, this mix is only 7.x.2 rather than being a fully, you know, encompassing dynamic mix. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. that is yeah. all too often the case. And I think some of it is, you know, when they're kind of under the gun to to remix older movies as Dolby Atmos movies. And they just, you know, it, it's like a production line. They, they got to keep cranking this stuff out. And I, I imagine that just makes it simpler for them to do. Um, or, you know, it may just be that some habits are really hard to break. And if you're used to mixing in a channel based environment, well, all this newfangled object-oriented stuff might not be for you, in which case I, you know, maybe you should retire. <laughs> just, just my humble opinion. Now, do you have to, let's say I run through the whole gamut and I do the 7.x.6, 
or whatever, 12.x.6. Yeah. yeah, so I'm done with calibrating that. And I want to do the, uh, I want to mirror the side channels and I want to mirror the top six for those Disney mixes. Do I got to recalculate that or recalibrate it? Nope. No, you don't have to. Because unless you move the speakers or change them or rearrange the furniture in the room or you know, do something that would cause the actual measurements to be different, then the measurements are the measurements. Okay. And it, an important point for your folks to listen to understand is that things like base management and all of those things are turned off during the measurements because we want to see what your speakers can do so as to inform our decision as to what we're going to ask them to do right so if you have little tiny speakers that are only good to 120 hertz we're not going to set the crossover on those speakers at 80 because you might blow something up that, that would be silly so we need to know what the speakers can do all by themselves so that we can then decide what we're going to ask them to do. Yeah. Um, but having had that information, what you're now talking about in terms of distributing the signals differently is you're basically telling our decoder, instead of outputting left top front, left top middle, and left top rear, just buy, you know give me the, whatever is going to the left top middle speaker and put that same signal into all three of these speakers. Yeah. And so it's more of a signal routing thing than anything else. But it is something that... It, it's a fairly small point, but it's something that we can do that a lot of products just can't do. Yeah. Uh, most products, if you do have six channels up there and you run into one of those mixes, you're only going to hear the two of them and there's not a lot you can do about it. Question. Uh, so when you, when I do the mirroring on the sides for the, uh, like Disney mixes for the side channels, I had, de I had decorrelation in the advanced tab. Can you do for that? An array, that makes some sense. Yeah. yeah. Do you not, do that on the top or no? You could. Is there a section? Um, I, I didn't look at that. Well, so you, most people won't know the screen you're talking about, but under the oh. advanced settings screen, it, it's okay. We don't have to go there. Um, for that decorrelation thing, you can apply it to the front channels, meaning the screen channels, or to the surrounds. And the surround group in this mm. context does include everything that's not a screen channel, basically, or a subwoofer. It's all of the channels, including the upper ones. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. I didn't, so, yeah, I didn't think about mirroring the top sixes. Yeah, so okay. decorrelation was uh, more important back in the 90s um, when we were dealing with Dolby Pro Logic and the, the separation. You, you really, with the original Dolby surround that evolved into Pro Logic, there were only four channels. You had left and right, you had left plus right, which was seared toward the center. And then you had left minus right, which was the surround information. So the two surround speakers, left and right, were actually doing the same thing. And so rather than getting the sense that they're kind of inside your head, almost like wearing headphones, they THX invented this idea called decorrelation. They would randomize it just a little bit, enough so that the sound stayed out here instead of being inside your head. Um, with discrete 7.1, 5.1, you know, all the modern digital formats that are not matrix analog but are actually digital and have real separation there's really been no need for decorrelation in quite a while but we leave the feature in there because you know it'd be more trouble to pull it out <laughs> but by default it's off yeah um, in this situation you you are good for you you're identifying a case that i had not thought of where it actually makes sense to use it if you are doing an array of you know because of the limitation of the soundtrack if you're doing an array of speakers, all of which are doing the same thing, then yeah, add some decorrelation to make them seem a little bit more open and bigger. Yeah. Uh, what happens if you don't have middles in a 7.1.2 mix? Does it spread across the top, front, and back? Yes, it yeah. does. The other option is to, um, if you have all six channels, you could create, um, a, a basically turn off the left and right top middle channels and only use the front and back because they'll they'll be split to try to create an image of something where the middle speaker is. So if if the if you don't actually have a middle speaker, they'll put it into the front and rear speaker on that side to create a phantom image of something in between, um, which you know is is fine. But it's it's mostly the most and frankly most people wouldn't notice that. I blame it's mostly the people with all six speakers above that. I blame the object disorder. viewer. I blame the object viewer for like letting people now see because now I see it and, and I mention it. And it's like yeah. kind of disappointing now that we see what's actually happening. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you can make really good, satisfying soundtracks either yeah. way, but I'm I'm with you. It's it's disappointing when they're leaving the possibilities that Dolby gave them with this incredibly flexible and powerful and creative tool. They're leaving a lot of the creative possibilities kind of on the cutting room floor, which seems like a shame. 